Hello and welcome to another TA School tutorial. We are working with the financial module today. Now let's have a look at the student's financial subscriptions. This will be found in the student module. Subscriptions is linked to the financial module. So this will display all subscriptions relating to one particular student. In this case, we are looking at a grade 8 student. Every financier must have an email address so that they will be able to receive emails relating to the school, to the school's documentation, invoicing, whatever communication is required for emailing. Ensure that all the details are saved. Make sure all students have the correct subscriptions and that is linked to the financial module. Now let's have a look at the financial module and see how every subscription is created. The financial module is set up according to these steps. In the account setup, you will have various account settings. Some accounts might have, some schools might have two accounts for their banking. We have created two accounts so that the school can see how we use the account in the entire school. In some cases you might have accounts simply for school fees and one for other accounts. So let's work on the basis that no matter what the setup is, everything will be directed into the correct account. When it comes to setting up the accounts, we must have a RAND value and the payment terms that are required for each account type. In the documentation of the school, the bank accounts are necessary to link records. When we are working with the invoice, the credit note, the receipt, the purchases invoice, or the purchase order, every document would have to have a record, and every record must have a link. And that is established by creating a perfect number that is accessed within your school and is identified by every user. Set up these records with the correct number based on whatever was last used in your books, and you would be able to perfectly continue with the existing record numbers. Let's have a look at the student setup. The service groups is basically the period in which payments are required. The subscription services would be school fees and school fees, boarding, aftercare would be required to be invoiced in a certain time period and this is where it is set up in services. The correct amount is linked to the particular service and that will be allocated to the users as necessary. So the services would be the time period in which every subscription is required to be invoiced. So this is a subscription and the service would be school fees and school fees would be 
invoice for a certain period of time for a specific amount. When you're working with subscriptions, kindly ensure that they are signed for various levels. For example, if uniforms are required for grade 5 students, then uniforms must be invoiced for grade 5 students. If every grade has a specific number of students, ensure that that number of students is displayed in the screen in order to identify that we are billing the correct group. Let's do this now. We are looking at uniforms for grade 5. That is how we'll be able to view the subscription. So the service will be uniforms of grade 5 and that's a monthly requirement that we build monthly and all the students in grade 5 subscription to the subscribing to this uniform will be billed a certain value. Now that we have all that information correct, let's have a look at how we can ensure that our students are correctly assigned to this, to this invoicing system, to this invoicing requirement, sorry. Make sure that there are no students already subscribed so that you can get the correct students in the subscription. Grade 5 is selected and the correct number for grade 5 is subscribed. Let's make sure we can invoice now. But let's have a look and, show, and see that our invoices have the correct template. Right, this is the template we are working with. Templates may be changed. That's the header, and you have your own report. The footer and the detail may be changed according to your requirements. We will now begin to invoice students, and we will be invoicing specifically grade 5. As a test, this would apply for the students that we have already created a subscription for. So if you don't have a subscription for your students, you would not be able to generate the right invoices. That is why I have showed you in the first place where to identify the subscription for students. That would be the student module. If you don't have any subscriptions correctly assigned to those students, then you would have a difficult time getting the correct invoices out. So, first step is to make sure that all your students have the correct invoicing requirements. And those subscriptions can be found in the student module and the first step is to make sure that it is assigned in the financial module. In the financial module it is not easy to identify what subscription applies to students and that is why I referred to the student module for easy access. You may click on the reports module in order to gain information on any aspect relating to students. The invoices have many records to relate to. If you find that the invoices are taking long to generate, have a look at the processes that are involved and this will help Tier School to send every single process to the correct document or the correct area of application. 
all the invoices have been generated, all the books have been updated. When an invoice is created, your journal is updated, your ledger is updated. Every student that has been invoiced will have a record that has been updated in a specific service that they have subscribed to. While we are waiting for, while we have paused at this point in time, it is important to note that without the correct template, you would not be able to generate the invoice that you desire. So, I have prescribed a template for the invoices. And you have not got first-hand understanding of how to create the invoice. I will show you in the statement where you can go to to generate a document with your school logo on it. Makes it easier for printing and for distribution. At this point in time, we'll be looking at creating invoices and processing them. When you process invoices, it immediately goes into the work in progress aspect of the invoice of the student invoices. Student invoices are generated on the template that is already in place at the time of creating the invoice. And in order to change this, you'll have to delete every single invoice, every single record that was created and recreate the invoices on a new template. But for now, we have to process invoices for all these students. Once they have been processed, they will move out of work in progress and they will move into the same, into the, into the same aspect of the student invoices. Send me email, save, and have it ready to be moved into other aspects of TA School. Once an invoice has been processed, every document that is going to be generated has, been, has received confirmation that this particular fund or this particular fee is legitimate and is now completely generated to the financial records. There are various things that you can do in order to identify your, your student invoicing. And there is a record of the invoicing in the subscriptions. And there is a record of every invoice that is sent in the messaging module. So now let's see how this message was processed with the wrong email address, with the right email address. Let's find out. Firstly, make sure that the email is set up. Test the email. If the email is sent, make sure that it is reflecting in the inbox of the sent of the address that it was sent to. If the email has not got the right address, then it would not show in our sent messages. That means it would have failed. And if the email fails, correct the email address and resend the invoice. In this instance, we would have to check the student's status of the in, of this invoice. Right. 
It looks like we have a bit of a problem here, don't we? This invoice is in pending. Oh no, no, it's in failed. There's no invoice that was pending. There's no invoice that was sent. And this invoice has, has failed. It has failed simply because the email address was not correct. And we need to change that to make sure that the email address and the correct email is delivered to the student's parents, guardian. Or sponsor. Right. In the financial module, it is important to resend the emails because there is a timeline that is involved. So, and also documentation is a numbered according to the number of instances it is generated. So if documents are generated more than once, you will find that from work in progress, a document would have a number. And that number from that document process is carried on as a reference. And now, Let's check if this particular document is now processed. Right, so with the correct information on hand, you'll be able to move on without any difficulty, and it makes life simpler for you if everything is in place in the first place. And in order to get things moving faster. It takes a bit of work, but it's worth it in the end. The invoice has been delivered. And the parent may, the parent, the guardian, the sponsor may now keep a record of this invoice. However they wish. Great. Moving on to statements. Right. When it comes to statements, it works exactly like the invoicing module. The invoicing and statements is identical in operation, and you wouldn't have any difficulty because the invoice has already been generated, and the invoices, I mean, the the statements should already be um, ready to be processed. So, once you've created the statements, the next step is to process them. So, when it's in creation state, it always is in work in progress. And in order to confirm that you are moving forward with that document, after checking that all the information on the invoice is indeed correct, you may now 
proceed. So you can process the document, you can email it, or you can print it so that now it becomes available in the ledger in all the processed processing financial records for the student itself. The statement will show balances based on the subscriptions of the student. So take the lump sum. If you're having a difficult if you're having a difficult time getting to that particular style of operating, let us know and we can design it or we can figure out a way to make it work for you. This statement is now showing King's Harvest Academy. This is the default statement layout. In order for you to have your school logo, you will have to go into the own reporting system to create your own header. When you create your own header, you have to go into, you have to click on New, name the document, and in, in terms of creating a document, a requirement is for you to have a base. To start off with, it must be related, you must have something to that is related to the statement. And there are certain criteria that don't immediately, uh, is not accepted. For example, if the statement is supposed to just have one item from the main area, and you select something that's not in the main area, Go back to the first item and then select it. And once you have worked with the field tree correctly, you'll be able to flow with creating the document. Creating documents would be a simple process simply because the field tree will guide you. And the field tree would have information that you can select. So when you double click, it moves into the right hand side. And when you move on to processing it, you'll be able to find an easier way to move forward into fast reports. So changing certain records would be easy. And it's highly recommended to generate, but not refresh more than once. If you refresh and generate more than once, you will lose information. Now we are in fast reports. And this is the raw report. These labels should not scare you. They're just everything you brought in from TS school. The bands may be expanded. You click in the band and you move the band around. So when you're moving in the band, click on the band and then left and right click. To toggle between bands, you use the Windows rules. It's not difficult to do that because Windows rules would apply. On the left hand side of fast reports you may use you may use alphabets, you can get pictures, you can copy and paste, you can add lines, you can add various elements. So let's see if we can add the logo. And you click once on the item on the left hand side. You don't have to drag and drop and then you just move your cursor towards the document and click once on the document. You'll be able to work efficiently by just clicking once and not double clicking and that will be left click. So with, with images it's better to expand from the corners and not from the center and the sides. And when you're working with bands don't forget to click once on the band or you can move straight to if you're not working within the band itself and you're working with um the document with the information that you have already placed within to your school to bring through to fast reports. You click 
on the link itself. You click on the link, and if you don't know what those links mean, it's going to have to be a to and from battle, but it's actually so much better than figuring it out. So if you click save, and you go back into the document, once it has loaded, you'll be able to see what's happened already. And you can disagree and agree with the layout or the size, or maybe the the fact that you have moved the incorrect information into the document. You can add and delete. So let's delete what we think is not necessary. And let's realign and place everything in the right in the correct perspective. And when you're not sure, so it will just take you 20 seconds to save, go back into the document, check it out. Remind yourself what needs to be changed. And click change, don't click refresh, because that will take everything away and it will make your life very difficult. So click change, because that's all we're doing, we're just going to be changing. If your document, if your um, text needs to be aligned to the left, just like the window settings, align it to the left. can expand, working within the dots, That's, as long as you have the dots, you can handle all the text very simply and efficiently. So left clicking, right moving, it all works simply. You can also use shift and arrows to move text around, or you can use control arrows to expand the block of the text. If you click on the A for, for any font and insert it in the same way that we inserted the picture by clicking on the text and Clicking once on the document and brings through the text. The text also open and you can add information as simply as that. So it's one right, one left click, click and yes, and click left once, or you can copy and paste. Copying and pasting is so much easier. And sometimes you'll find that the system might, if you're moving too fast, the system might be stalling a little. Um, be patient and maybe press escape or just wait. And everything will fall into place pretty simply. So let's do this again. Let's make sure everything's in order. If something happened along the line. Right. So I just undid. Click the undo and I'm back in the right place. Great. So we can actually manually insert information into the document. Sometimes it's so much quicker to do so. And um, relying on the information from the field tree is basically the information that you don't want to type in time and time again. So this will be standard information. And you can change font if you like, you can change the color, you can change the layout any way you like. So let's see how that looks.
and we have manually inserted this text, so I'm sure it works just fine. If you're happy with that layout, you can proceed and if you need to change a few things like the spacing or the completion of some of these texts, it's important to realign and to expand the text boxes. And the great thing about working with this is that even if you overlap the text boxes, you would still be able to see the information if you have everything aligned in the manner that it should be. Right, and let's expand. Make sure that that is correct. It should be a little closer, but not too much. There we go, that's perfect. And let's get the Xero City into ratio. Making sure that everything looks appealing and correct and not stupid. And that will just be one little digit. And we're good to go. Well, let's insert. A pretty diagram, a pretty um, separator. How about that? These separators, I've got the separator from the last toolbox, from the last tool selection, and I'm now using my control and shift, or my, con my shift and arrow, excuse me. And my shift and control. Sometimes you can use your mouse, it's not a big deal, it's just your left click all the time. And when you look at fast reports, it could be scary because it's all new, it's all new. But if you pay attention to what's on the left hand side and what's on the right hand side, and understand the captions it will be easier for you to move around so if we want to change the color we we'll look for the for some for the for the word color and we'll make sure that we're working with the right elements because we will be working with the blocks so if you click on the block and the let's just quickly Make sure that, yes, you see the lines now highlighted and all the aspects that we need to work with are on the left hand side. Is there anything that we'd like to add or change or enhance? It's all there. So, this particular aspect. Is now highlighted. This component is now highlighted. So all the information that is within that component will be displayed on the left hand side and ready for change. If it's, it's not in those little, if it's not highlighted, it would not be the right area to change. And you can identify it by the label. The name would be displayed in order for you to identify if you are working with the right element. I'm only showing you this simply because you would want to play around with it sometime to change your document, to move information around, to make sure that you have the right address, to make sure that the telephone numbers are correct if they have, if they have changed. So if you are going to be working with this particular aspect of the reporting system, um, I'm only showing you this so that you can change elements correctly. So select and change. Select and change. That's simple as this. Select and change. So we are selecting everything and changing everything. If it is not highlighted it cannot you are not changing the right thing. I think the rule is pretty simple in this area of 
of the documentation. So now let's see how we've done it. Okay. So we have everything in alignment. We have the right address, assuming it's the right address. But now let's just change that black outline. Okay, so select it. Make sure again the right aspect to be, to be changed. My school will update because we've been quite busy. So let me back up. Alright, let's give us the outline. And if you don't know what you're doing, it actually does help to play around, but you must be aware that you are working with the correct component all the time. Alrighty, let's have a look now. Great, so we have completed the task in getting that done. Let's quickly generate an a statement and see how that looks. So we have created our header. Save it. Sample it. So we've got the header. Select the header. Great. And display. Perfect. Sample. And it is displaying. So we are on the right track. Let's have a look at what invoice. Whatever statements we have ready. Nothing would have the new information, the old information would be displayed. So let's create a specific student. Remember we looked at the student in the first place. And we should have a zero balance because we did not generate any invoices for him and we have not generated a statement before. And it shows zero because nothing was created. But the point here is to make sure that we have the right header. Now that we have the right header, we can start creating statements for everybody. And this should round up the financial module. Thank you for paying attention. And you can email me if you like any information. Have a lovely day.